All right, so last week, Adobe released their April 2023 updates uh, to Lightroom and Photoshop and a few other apps, and there are a bunch of features, but there was one feature in particular, especially for photographers, that got covered a ton, and that is their new Denoise AI model. Uh, I covered it as well. Uh, I released my video last week that uh, compares the new Denoise model in Lightroom to Topaz Photo AI's uh, Denoise model, and so here's a card for that if you want to check that out. Uh, and it, it really is a great uh, feature. It's a welcome addition to anyone who is a Lightroom and Photoshop subscriber, uh, and because with Photoshop, you have access to it in Adobe Camera Raw. But there was another feature that, uh, for me, I was super excited when I saw it, but I, it didn't get as nearly as much play uh, as Denoise. And I think it's it's really important. It's something I wanna cover in this video. And basically what I'm gonna do is use this new feature to take this photo from this state to this state. And that new feature is the ability to uh, use tone curves with adaptive AI masks. Uh, I've covered uh, AI masking a bunch uh, already. It's super powerful uh, and we're gonna use it here. But now you can actually take each mask and adjust the tone curve for that specific region. Not the tonal region, but the actual region within your image, which I think is super powerful. And so we're gonna jump in and I'm gonna show you how I use it. But before I do, first, I'd like to welcome you to this channel, especially if you're new here. My name is Brian. I help photographers like you get better looking photos using apps like Lightroom and Photoshop and other third-party apps. So with that, let's jump into Lightroom Classic. All right, so here, this is the photo that we're gonna be working on and um, the only thing I did to it, if I hit the backslash key, you can see that um, I just did some clone removal just to save time. I got rid of some of the structures in the background, but pretty much everything else is as is. So what I wanna do is show you how to use tone curves to, uh, where, to get really great results, like very powerful, very uh, kind of like refined results. So the first thing I'll do before I do anything is just get a quick, um, white balance adjustment. So I'll take this dropper here and I'll just click on this gray area here and you can see how it kind of gets rid of that bit of a color cast that was there. Um, and just to show you, um, let me, I'll open up the exposure for a second um, and open up the shadow so you can see the image. Now this is a church that I found while exploring Iceland a few years ago. And if you look at the photo, you can see that it definitely has this distinct kind of fisheye distorted look. And that's because I used my beloved Canon 15 millimeter uh, f 2.8 fisheye lens. And you can see this is an adapter. This goes from the uh, Sony E mount to the Canon EF mount. I call this lens the funk buster lens because if you are ever in a creative funk uh, and you have this lens or you have a fisheye lens, I mean, it, it immediately removes any of that kind of creative block. I love this lens. I will never ever sell this lens. Uh, and I'm so glad to have it. And I'm so glad that there are adapters that allow me to use it with my Sony camera. But back to the image. So again, you can see that this is the photo. I love the way the fisheye kind of creates that effect, but we're not gonna use um, these edits here. We're gonna bring it back to the way it was with the only exception of a custom white balance. So what I wanna do is talk to you about the new feature, the ability to use tone curves with a mask. Historically, you can only use a tone curve globally. And at the end of this video, I will share a card um, where I go into great detail about the tone curve. So if you want to learn more, you'll have that opportunity at the end. But what I mean by globally is when you adjust the tone curve, it will adjust the entire image. It'll adjust the highlights, shadows, and midtones, but it does it in the sky and in the foreground. And it's just, it's not as effective. You know, you might want to have a certain uh, tone curve adjustment for the sky because it has one type of dynamic range, one type of tonality, and then a different type for the foreground. And so now the ability to do that using a mask um, is here. But furthermore, beyond just a mask, you can use it with the adaptive AI masks. And that's what's awesome. So I'm going to show you um, how I do this the first thing I'm gonna do is create a mask for the sky, but even that, there's a little bit of a tutorial here that I wanna show you. Uh, so check this out. I'm gonna click on sky and Lightroom, if I hover over this thumbnail, you can see that uh, it selects the sky and it does a pretty dang good job, but it is not perfect. 
So look at the, um, the, the top left of the church. Like look over here, you'll see that kind of yellow overlay. So the mask is spilling over. Um, it's also spilling over over here. See, as I hover over. So check this out. I don't know why you have to do this. Um, I'm hoping Adobe fixes this, but I'm gonna show you a way to get an even cleaner mask right now. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'll re to make it easier to identify, I'll call this uh, sky mask one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create a new mask. Just like before, I'm gonna select sky, except this time, what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna make a quick change here. Well, actually the first thing I'm gonna do is, I don't know why the default exposure goes to negative 42. Let me go here as well and set that to zero. Um, but I'll rename this to sky mask two and I'll click on it to expand. Now here's what I'm gonna do. And it, it makes no sense, I promise you. I'm gonna click on subtract, which is gonna remove whatever I select here from the existing sky and I'm gonna so select sky. So as you can imagine, we have nothing because we said, hey, make a sky selection and then remove it. But watch what happens now. If I go and I click on invert. Okay, so let's click here. Here was our original mask. This is the second mask, the mask where we remove the sky and invert it. Do you see how much cleaner that mask is? compared to just selecting sky. So if there's a lesson here, when you're doing sky selection, my recommendation, make the sky selection, subtract the sky selection, and invert that sky selection that you just subtracted. Um, because the proof is in the pudding, like it's a much cleaner mask. So I'm gonna remove this uh, sky mask because we don't need it. And I'll just rename this one just to sky mask since it's the only mask we need here. And then I'm gonna create a mask for the foreground. So the way, the way that I'm gonna do that is I'll click on create new mask. I'm gonna select sky just like before. And at the top level of the mask, I'm gonna invert uh, mask one. And you can see now if we kind of go between the two, they're really nice and clean. And then I'm gonna rename this as well to um, foreground mask. So now we have our two masks. Now the actual new feature that I wanna talk about when you click on uh, one of the masks, you'll now, when you scroll down, see that we have a tone curve and you have all, you have the, the primary tone curve as well as the three color channels, red, uh, green, and uh, blue. And so it allows you to control the tone curve, but it's bound or clipped to the mask, the way you would clip uh, layers in Photoshop. This tone curve adjustment will only apply to the selection in this mask which is why it's so important to get a clean selection, uh, which is why I showed you uh, my process of doing that for the sky, for example. So we're not gonna do anything other than use the tone curve. And the way that I'm gonna do it is, I, I just wanna bring out a little bit more uh, you know, detail, uh, a little bit more tone. So I'll uh, put a dot here in the middle for the midtones, and I'm actually gonna darken those midtones. Then I'll click a dot here, and let's uh, kind of bring out the highlights a little bit. And then just to kind of give you a rough uh, kind of thing of what I'm doing, this dot, this area here, these are your highlights, the middle are your midtones, these are your shadows. And then this top, uh, this bottom left dot is the black point, the top right is the white point. Again, I have a video covering this, I'll share it later. So I'll click here for the shadows and I'll bring out that information. So just right off the bat, if we click, you can see how this adds contrast. And you might be asking, well, why don't you just use the contrast slider, uh, which is right over here. And the, sh the highlight shadows, whites, black, and exposure. You can, like you can, by all means, if you wanna brighten the exposure a little bit more, by all means. It's just that I find that using the tone curve gives me far more precise control over editing tone. And I, I don't think you can really argue with that. I feel like I can control specifically how tone uh, is interpreted across the entire tonal range. Um, whereas when I use a slider, for example, contrast, this is a slider that's been programmed by engineers to do a certain thing. Um, and you don't have any control other than the actual amount. And so I'd rather apply contrast myself using the tone curve. But here's the other thing that I can do. Clearly this was sunset and I wanna add a little bit more of a warm tone and I can do that. I can do that with the temperature slider 
But I find that by using the, um, the blue channel, the blue tone curve channel, uh, I can control the color in specific tonal areas. So for instance, I can take the mid-tone over here and I can drag it to the bottom. And I feel like what Adobe has done with the color channel tone curve is amazing because in each one, it shows you like if you were to drag a point up, up and to the left, for example, you'd get more green uh, and then down to the right, you get magenta. And so for each of these colors, you can kind of see. So here we're gonna get kind of towards the orangey yellow. And look what happens when I bring that in there how the sky, just a little bit, how the sky takes on this beautiful warm tone. And if I wanna just kind of recover some of the um, highlights, I can bring that back here towards this neutral diagonal line. I can also take the shadows and let's say I, I don't want those to be too cool. I can bring that up a bit and that's gonna add a little bit of blue just to the shadows. And so you can see now just how much prettier that sky looks. And, all we really did was use these uh, two different tone curves. You can do so much with tone curves, it's not even funny. Uh, it, it's a little complicated, I get it. It can be a little intimidating. Trust me, for the longest time I was intimidated, I never touched them. But once I took the time to uh, understand them, um, especially because I'm red, green, colorblind, a lot of times I, I try not to mess around with it because I'm not sure, like I don't know what magenta really looks like and I'm not sure if I'm, adding too much green, for example. So, but I, I do, I can see orange and yellow really well and I can see blue. So this actually works out really well for my type of photography, which is primarily landscape and travel. So, and again, you can see just how nice it looks. And, and once again, if you want, let's say, you know, you want to manually use the shadow slider to uh, control that, you can. I'm just showing you how much versatility a simple tone curve uh, can, you know, adds. So now we've done, uh, we've added uh, or adjusted the tone curve for the sky. Now we can adjust a completely different tone curve for the foreground. And this is where, I, in my opinion, why this is such an awesome feature and it just hasn't gotten a lot of publicity, so to speak. So what I can do is just like before, I, I usually start in the mid-tone here and, you know, adjust to see like, what, what, what is it doing to those areas? Same thing with the highlights, like, Maybe I can kind of bring out some information here, shadows. You know, the thing that you want to remember is that you don't want to completely ruin the overall aesthetic of the photo, meaning the sun, clearly the light source of the sun is already kind of setting down here. So this can't be too bright because your light source is coming this way. And you don't, and what we don't want to do is make it seem like our light source is also is coming from kind of this area. So you don't want it to be too over the top. You want to kind of respect the tone. Um, and so I'm just kind of moving around here. Somewhere right around there looks good. Um, and then again with the highlights, just see what it does. Something right around there. And so you, as you can imagine, this looks kind of like a funky reverse S curve. Um, the other thing you want to make sure of is as you're adjusting shadows, if you look over here, um, if you adjust the tone of the foreground, for example, too much, especially when compared to another tone curve, you can start to see this outline. And this is something I want to show you. And that's because I'm opening up the shadows too much. You're get, we're starting to get this kind of fringe. And so you wanna bring that down um, until you, it kind of blends in naturally. And so he, that, that's looking good. And then again, I can go over here, for example, to the highlights and maybe just a, add a touch of warmth, just a little kiss. And you can see how the door got that nice little warm color to it. And so, you know, that's pretty much how I would use tone curves independently for the sky in the foreground. There are other benefits to having these masks. For example, let's say for the sky, I wanna go ahead now and add a little bit of uh, dehaze. Uh, just to, I love dehaze for skies, um, but I hate dehaze on foregrounds. It just, it's my, in my opinion, I hate it. It just ruins a foreground. It makes it way too contrasty, but for a sky, it is perfect. So you can see it had a little bit more of that blue tone, but it added also beautiful contrast in the clouds. I mean, the sky looks phenomenal. And then I can go to the foreground mask and add things like clarity, which I typically don't want to add to a sky. 
um, and add some texture as well to the foreground. So those are the things that I would do at the mask level for the most part. Now we can go back to our global editing here. And here, if you want, you can kind of adjust uh, overall uh, the, the tone. You might be wondering, or you might want to ask, well, what should I do first? Um, I, I mean, you could first kind of make some basic tonal adjustments globally to the, to the image. The only thing I really do is get my white balance corrected. Um, and that usually is a good starting point. Also, if the, the image was noisy, now that I have a really great um, denoise in Lightroom, I would uh, use that in the beginning as well. If it's a raw file, it doesn't currently work on JPEGs. So there's that. But now I don't have to worry about adding clarity or dehaze globally. I can uh, apply them sp to specific areas. And even more importantly, the tone curve, um, I don't have to worry about it being totally global because like, there would be times, and you probably could even find other videos that I've done where I've edited with a global tone curve where I would apply the tone curve and then I'd have to go and either create a mask for the sky to adjust it because the highlights got too blown out um, or the shadows. So it's just, it gives you a lot more versatility, a lot more flexibility and that I'm all for that. And then finally, the other things we can do um, is, uh, you know, we can further refine sharpening. Sharpening is fine global here. Um, and then, you know, adjust the mask and then also add just a uh, post crop vignette just to further draw the eye uh, to the, to the center of the frame. And here you go original uh, and processed photo. Uh, basically, the, the I would say the, the bulk of what carries this photo are those um, individual custom targeted tone curve adjustments that we now can apply with uh, in conjunction with adaptive masks. So it's just really powerful and it's something that I think you should spend a lot of time getting familiar with. Now, before we end things off, just give me 10 seconds to tell you about a product that I've talked about before. It's called my Landscape AI Preset Packs. These are basically a collection of 30 presets uh, that utilize these adaptive AI masks to create really great looks for the sky, the foreground, or the entire scene. I just updated these uh, a couple days ago to version 3.0 because they now each have custom tone curve adjustments for the sky and the foreground. Uh, this uh, is something that I'm very excited about. The people who have already purchased it have shared really wonderful feedback with me. I'm very thankful. And I just want to thank you. If you do make your purchase, you're obviously supporting directly my small business, which helps me continue to make these videos. And I thank you very much for that. So with that, I hope you found this new feature helpful. I think it's really underrated and very powerful. I mentioned before, if you want to learn more about tone curves, check this video out here. I go over tone curves pretty much from start to finish. You'll have a much better understanding of what they are and how you can use them more effectively. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up, subscribe if you're not a subscriber and hit that bell icon so you get notified of all new videos. Thanks a lot, everyone.